Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and in today's video I'm gonna build something. So I actually don't have a chip tester yet. I have only this uh, programmer that can be used to test some logic chips, but uh, not much else. So I really wanted to have a real <laughs> or a good chip tester and I uh, decided upon this, the Retro Chip Tester Professional from the 8-Bit Museum. So you might uh, already have seen uh, some other YouTubers that have uh, tested this. Uh, I know uh, Noel's Retro Lab did, but uh, I wanted to give it a shot myself, so I bought uh, the PCB from uh, the guy who sells it on uh, 8bitmuseum.de website. Because uh, you have to build it yourself, but the microcontroller is already populated on uh, the board, which is good because uh, that would be hard to solder on. And all the rest of the components uh, you need to find uh, yourself. So I just want to have a moment here to thank my sponsor PCBWay. If you want to have produced some very nice and good quality PCBs of your own, then you should definitely visit uh, PCBWay.com. This is the last PCBs I got produced from PCB Way, and uh, these are very nice quality, very nice looking PCBs. And the prices are quite affordable uh, for as low as uh, only 5 US dollars for 5 PCBs. So head over to PCB Way and get your instant quote on some uh, PCBs right now. PCB Way has an open source community, and right now you can submit articles. Uh, as a contribution to that community. If you have a project or have written a technical article, you can submit it here and uh, there's uh, great prizes to win. Fortunately, you find the bill of materials, uh, the BOM on uh, the website that you get access to when you purchase this. And I chose to order everything from DigiKey and they had almost all the parts. A few things I couldn't find on DigiKey, so I got a couple of, uh, well actually I did another order from DigiKey because there were a few components that I uh, initially thought I didn't find on DigiKey, but uh, I found some uh, replacements and uh, this one I think it's uh, one of the chips that I couldn't find that I found on eBay, so uh, no, I think I have everything here. This is the website 8bitmuseum.de. It's a German website, but uh, there's a page in English for the retro chip tester professional, and uh, yeah, here's all the information you need, and there's an English uh, uh, manual. So here's all the necessary information. As you can see, this chip tester comes with an option. This is a power supply board and this voltage uh, regulator or what it is. I had a hard time finding uh, the correct one, but I eventually found uh, a similar that should be compatible with the one that was in the bomb. So this goes through all the different uh, things that you can test and how to use this. The Retro Chip Tester Pro is uh, able to detect and test a lot of uh, different chips, ranging from uh, memory chips to all sorts of um, old special chips like Commodore 64 chips and uh, yeah, of course uh, the usual uh, Logic uh, 74 series and uh, yeah, different kinds of memory modules, SRAM, SIPRAM, yeah, a lot of things, EEPROMs. And you can also get a, a bunch of breakout adapters for testing things like Commodore 64 or Atari cartridges. Yeah, so it's really extensive and um, 
I bought it with the firmware already pre-programmed on the controller so uh, I don't have to do anything with that but of course it gets updated so you can uh, update it to newer revisions later. The bill of materials is a separate document and it uh, is also quite extensive. It uh, not only have a list of uh, the parts that you need but it also explains a lot and uh, talks about the alternative uh, components that you can use instead of the one listed. For example, there's uh, alternative relays. I didn't get the one that was suggested, so I bought this one instead, the Axicom EM03TS. And uh, yeah, a lot of uh, hints and uh, things that you need to know before you start ordering uh, <laughs> your components because uh, there's some options here and uh, read through all of this. And for example, an SD card adapter and uh, LCD display is not listed in uh, the shopping cart or the listing of the bill of materials, but you have to choose that yourself. And there's also, in fact, an interactive uh, bill of materials that uh, shows you the board and uh, a searchable list of uh, components. And when you click or hover over some of the lines, you see where the components go and you can search for one. For example, if I search for R58, it shows the placement on the PCB. If you have a hard time finding where to place a component, uh, this is a handy tool. And all uh, this content, uh, including a troubleshooting section and uh, how to program it and uh, different types of bill materials for different uh, vendors. There's some alternatives and also cases, 3D models. All this comes in a download in one zip file that you get access to when you purchase uh, the board. So here is the DC to DC uh, uh, power supply module that I'm gonna build first. Then I got the three um, adapters for testing uh, C64 cartridge. This is for uh, Atari and uh, this is for uh, WIC 20 cartridges. So there's a lot of things to do now. I won't show all the details uh, of building this because that will simply take too long and uh, this video will be too long. There will be two parts. The first part is me building this and the second part will of course be testing it. For adapters I won't be building these because I simply don't have uh, the necessary contacts yet. So these are the chips that I couldn't find on uh, DigiKey or uh, I even tried Raychelt but they didn't have it in stock. So it seems to be hard to find uh, these days. It's a Darlington Array ULN 2003A phone 2 on uh, no I actually bought uh, five of them on uh, eBay and here's the other components that were hard to find uh, 12 volt DC to DC converter and I found this track of power replacement should be the same and these relays I couldn't find either so uh, I later found <laughs> these replacements on uh, DigiKey so there's probably a couple of hundred uh, components in total for this build and uh, <laughs> yeah the challenge is to find everything and uh, solder it in correctly so i need to start organizing everything now and uh, make a plan on how to uh, build this there's gonna be a lot of soldering <laughs> so what about the cost well i haven't uh, summed it up uh, properly but uh, I think it is around $200 total for the components and uh, the PCBs including shipping or around 200 uh, euros maybe a little bit more when we are building a relatively large project like this it is important to be organized and uh, do everything in the correct order. You can't simply take out all the components and put them in a pile. You need to sort things out and 
the best thing to use for that is the bill of materials and I'm gonna build a DC to DC power supply module first so I printed it here and I'm gonna check off everything as I go this is just a simple uh, bill of materials list but uh, with the documentation for this project you actually get a 56 page full document for the bill of materials with explanation for almost every part and what you need to think about so that I'm gonna have up on my computer screen and refer to as I go along with this project. I sorted it and found all the parts for the first uh, board here so uh, let's get started with the soldering then. I'm gonna start with the two uh, voltage regulators. So this is gonna take a while but uh, hopefully the result will be good in the end. If we just methodical and double check everything then it should be okay. And now I already almost made a mistake. I swapped around the, the <laughs> voltage regulators, but uh, now they are correct. That went smooth and uh, turning around, we should see that the solder went through the vias and uh, all the way to the other side and looks okay there so we know that's a good solder job then then some resistors and I'm gonna quickly solder this up uh, without filming everything because that will be very boring so uh, I'll report back when I'm uh, finished or something exciting happening <laughs> Okay, that went smooth, almost finished, uh, one thing left, or actually two things, but uh, the DC to DC converter, there's actually two options, you can either use a Recon or the 0512D or a DD171 8PA, and I got a TMH 0512D, which is compatible with the Recon, so I'm using this. And this has three plus two pins, so uh, it's uh, not possible to get it wrong. To get it uh, flat down to the PCB, I just solder two of the pins first. And then you can just push it from the other side while you are melting the solder. Point of notice when you uh, solder in LEDs, it's uh, maybe not obvious to everyone which direction they go in, so uh, you need to be careful to check out that. Last items are uh, the pin headers because this board is gonna connect to the main board afterwards. Try to get them flush with the board and the correct angle, so I'm doing a little ow. Oh. So I'm doing a little one hand exercise here. All right, that was it. Just a little cleaning now and uh, we are done with the first part. So that was the power supply module and uh, now the main board and uh, that is a different beast. It uh, consists of uh, 43 different uh, components and uh, total over 200 components. There were already uh, some components soldered to this board, the Atmega microcontroller and the 
crystal oscillator and two small uh, capacitors. So I think I'm gonna start with uh, all the small uh, flat components uh, over here. I'll start with the 470 ohm resistors and there's no less than 54 of those. <laughs> so here's a lot of soldering. For uh, larger soldering jobs like this I usually use my homemade uh, fan that drags away the smoke and uh, here's some uh, carbon fiber uh, padding or what's it called, I don't know. Then I measure the length to see how I should bend uh, the legs. And these resistors start uh, here and goes along here and uh, ends up uh, all the way to the right. So I'm gonna do all these in one go. That was a lot of resistors. Uh, there are tools for bending this correctly and evenly. <laughs> I wish I had uh, a tool like that uh, right now. And uh, to find where every component actually goes, it's not enough with this simple list. I just use this to cross off things I'm finished with. Uh, I look at the real bill of materials uh, document and also uh, seems like uh, most of the values are printed on uh, the silk screen on the PCB as well. When placing similar uh, components I like to have them in the same direction so uh, the color bands match up. That doesn't look too bad. That was all the 470 ohm resistors placed. I don't want to place too many components at the same time because it uh, quickly gets a mess on the solder side of the board and it's easy to forget something then. So um, just uh, do them in batches. Time for some soldering again. Okay, that was the first batch of uh, soldering and uh, now I'm go gonna double check that all the pins are soldered and then gonna cut the pins and uh, continue with the next batch and I'm gonna skip uh, a bit now. Diodes are polarized or directional components so please make sure that you Place them in the correct direction where the black ring or the white ring, depending on the type of diode, corresponds with the line on the silk screen symbol. Now most of the smaller uh, passive components are in and uh, everything went smooth except uh, I ended up uh, missing one of the diodes. However, I uh, found that uh, <laughs> the one I missed I have used on uh, the DC board and uh, on the bomb there was actually listed uh, a replacement variant so I actually had that in stock so I found the solution. 
So now I'm gonna solder in uh, the socket for the chip and uh, different uh, switches and uh, connectors. Just solder both corners, then I push from uh, the other side to get it uh, flush with the board. Sometimes I reflow the solder points after I've cut just to make them look better. <laughs> And the 5305. Then we have this uh, poly fuse, PTC fuse, and a bunch of uh, transistors. I'm gonna go on with those and I'll be back. Just a couple of things to uh, notice here about the switches. Um, I was a little bit confused because I first found only four uh, switches and uh, on the actual uh, picture in the bomb there are only four switches but uh, th in this uh, latest revision k he added an additional switch and uh, yeah so i placed that one there and on the picture the smaller switch or the lowest one is the reset uh, switch so i'm placing that there another thing uh, i uh, noted was that um, the crystal and the two uh, capacitors there is actually listed in the bomb but uh, they were already populated so i <laughs> now have spares for those next is the buzzer and it's here and uh, it is marked with a plus and a plus there Then a bunch of transistors and uh, they all goes here, 11 of uh, this kind. It's time to solder in some uh, contacts and I have both the USB-B connector and uh, the barrel connector. These are optional, uh, you can select what you want and you have also the option to uh, for two different uh, USB micro contacts. And also I'm gonna solder in the SIF socket. All right, almost finished now. Uh, I have inserted most of the connectors, uh, pin headers and the terminal blocks that provides the possibility to use external power and uh, connector for uh, the display. Couple of things to mention, I got the wrong trimmer resistor here. This is actually a vertical <laughs> or tilted trimmer, but um, that obviously conflicts with this connector. So I had to just uh, bend the legs and uh, then I made it fit. That was not uh, an error in the bomb, that was uh, simply because uh, this 10k trimmer was uh, sold out on DigiKey, so I had to use an alternative. Also, I just discovered this capacitor C10 and uh, I couldn't find it on uh, the bill of materials, so <laughs> I wondered what that uh, was. But actually, it is listed on uh, another section that is uh, additional components for the revision 1.2k which this is so uh, this is a uh, 0.1 microfarad gonna solder that in now if i can uh, make it fit just a few more items to go and uh, yeah there's two relays and I'm not 100% uh, sure what the direction of these are, so I need to <laughs> look up that. I'm also going to solder in this uh, micro USB contact here. So then we have the maximum uh, power options for this 
For the two small relays, I looked at the data sheet and uh, it appears that this is pin one. Uh, there's some uh, larger gap between uh, the first pin and the second, and uh, obviously that goes into the square uh, hole there. So I presume this is the correct direction. <laughs> Hopefully, it is. Just a little bit of soldering and we're done. Alright, I'm done. That was all the components soldered in and uh, look at all these uh, <laughs> component le pins, legs. <laughs> I can save these for later. <laughs> and I have checked off everything on the bill of materials. So everything should be good to go. And uh, now I'm gonna take a close look on the PCB and all the solder joints to see if I have missed anything. Just gonna give the board a good clean with some alcohol. Alright, the Chip Tester Pro is finished and I'm pretty pleased with uh, the outcome. I think everything is uh, done correctly, but uh, still remains to be seen when tested. Just uh, one more thing, and that's the LCD display, and uh, I already got that. It isn't on the bill of materials, so you have to provide that uh, in addition, but I already had one on an Arduino kit from before. And that potentiometer is for adjusting uh, the contrast. Just one bag left and that's uh, some uh, jumpers for uh, different configurations. Let's power this thing up now and see if it uh, boots. I uh, have a micro USB 5 volts. Nope, nothing. Well, uh, checking uh, <laughs> the manual, there's always something you miss out and uh, I have missed out on these uh, wired links. There is one there and there and there, so uh, those need to go in and I'll just use a little, uh, yeah, some of the cut off uh, component uh, legs. Like that. You can of course use a short uh, bodge wire instead. So read the manual and the build instructions carefully. And for the long one I use this uh, little wire. So that's taken care of now, and uh, if you're not going to use um, the DC to DC power supply you, and use the USB instead, you actually need to uh, short out these jumpers, ground and uh, the one labeled USB. Okay, let's see now. Does it power on? <laughs> yes, it does. Power and light in the LCD, but uh, there's nothing on there. Maybe that is because the contrast is uh, off. Let me see. Yes, okay. Look at that. Selected SRAMs common. So that's a success so far. Let me try the other USB B connector. Yeah. Chip Tester Pro. Nice. So if you want to use the barrel connector and let's say you have a 9 volt input, then you need this one. This will regulate that uh, voltage down to 5 and 12 volts depending on uh, what you need. I think also if you only use uh, USB input, it will also create the necessary 12 volts if needed. Not really sure, have to look up that. <laughs> I have installed a couple of spacers uh, to get the board off of the ground so uh, we don't accidentally short anything out. So here's how it works. If you only need a 5 volt USB input and uh, your chip 
that you're gonna test doesn't require minus 5 volts or 12 volts, then you can set the, these two jumpers and you only need uh, to connect the USB. If you're gonna draw power from the barrel jack and you have an input uh, voltage ranging from uh, 6 to 12 volts, or you wanna use the USB input, then you can also uh, short out these jumpers for the barrel contact. And the uh, DC to DC module is not required. So in this configuration with all the four jumpers set, I can use a nine volt input from a barrel jack. It is center positive, that is important. And that will work too. But still we don't get minus five volt and plus 12 volt. For that, you need the DC to DC module. And to use the DC to DC module to provide all the required voltages, 5 volt, minus 5 volt, 12 volt. You remove all the jumpers. Make sure that the module is inserted correctly. And then you can provide, for example, plus 9 volts. And now it indicates 12 volt, 5 volt, and minus 5 volts here. And this is the power indicator. Okay, so we figured it out. And now I'm gonna test some chips. So I pulled out some uh, chips from my pouch collection. These are uh, 61, 64 memory chips. This is a 6502 CPU, some uh, logic chips, Commodore 64 color RAM, some 41646 RAMs. So let's start with uh, that one. I think all these should work. So uh, we start with uh, working chips test first <laughs> insert that so now it's a matter of uh, selecting DRAM 41464 and then okay testing okay seems to be uh, doing its thing now so it takes a while, it does an extensive test. So there's different patterns to checking a RAM. All right, test passed, nice. That was a 41464 and this is a 4164. So I selected the wrong one and I heard the relays clicked in, probably to provide uh, some other voltages. So that would be the same, 64 times 1. Nope. Uh, let me try once more. 64 by 1. No. That should be the correct selection, but it uh, doesn't detect the chip, so maybe it is uh, not working. I'm going to try another one. 4164 okay so now it worked so uh, <laughs> i found a chip that is uh, not detected so maybe that is a non-working one and that one passed yay now i'm gonna test this uh, 2114s ram which is uh, used for the color ram in the c64 let's see if we can uh, find that one s ram common 2114 there you go yeah test passed and that went really quick and that is of course because uh, that's just a little <laughs> small ram amount to test so i figured i'm gonna test this uh, 6502 cpu but uh yeah first of all it's too large and uh, also it doesn't seem to be on the list of uh, supported chips. So let's test some logic chips. Here I got uh, 74157. Don't remember now what that is for, but uh, let's see if we can test it. Logic. So let's select 7400 plus logic test. 
Okay, so that's a multiplexer, 74157, okay. Oh, I did not close <laughs> the SIF socket. <laughs> Let's try again. No, it doesn't seem to do anything. It says active, but uh, then nothing, but maybe that is correct. Now I got a plain old 7400 chip and uh, according to the documentation it should say test OK or test failed. But that doesn't happen so hmm. Okay most things seems to work just uh, fine uh, except the logic test. I tried another 7414 and uh, nothing's really happening. It is supposed to say test OK or test failed but uh, doesn't do either of those so uh, I need to figure out if uh, I have done something wrong or if I have misunderstood how to run those tests. Okay this is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I now figured out why the logic uh, tests didn't uh, work and uh, that's uh, simply because I have the wrong LCD display. So this is just a two-line LCD display and if I have read uh, the bill of materials uh, in detail I would have known that uh, I need a four uh, line or a 20 by four character display. <laughs> so uh, probably all the logic tests uh, went okay only that the result is shown on uh, line three and uh, Thus, it doesn't show up on this display. Fortunately, I already <laughs> ordered the correct display uh, a while back because uh, I uh, actually forgot to order it first. So I did afterwards, but then I found this one. So I wrongfully assumed that it was only a two <laughs> line display. Because the display fits in the contact and it worked, it wasn't uh, in my mind that it was the wrong one, but now I know better. So I have to pause a little bit and uh, wait for the correct display to come. <laughs> when it comes to a case, I actually decided to use this one, which only covers the bottom because um, I don't want to have a case over the actual device. So. Uh, because it's kind of cool to see all the components and have access to them if you want to troubleshoot anything. So um, yeah, I'll go for this one and I'm going to print this now on my 3D printer. So I have waited and waited for several days and actually I started making another video just uh, because I uh, was afraid this one was going to be postponed. But luckily today it uh, came. <laughs> So now I can uh, reach my deadline. I usually have a couple of weeks of uh, slack before I publish any video. And here it is. A nice uh, display. However, this doesn't have pins, so I need to solder in some uh, yeah, pin headers. So you're actually supposed to uh, mount this uh, display uh, on an angle like this. And uh, yeah, there is a model for um, a 3D model that you can print a holder but I'm gonna just start with uh, placing it directly into the socket it can rest itself on top of this uh, capacitor <laughs> I guess for now pins are in let's insert the display then check it out Yeah, it turned on, but I can't read. Well, it is the contrast. This is way off compared to the other one. So that's much better. <laughs> I'm not gonna remove the plastic yet. All right, now we can see the whole thing and get all the information. So <laughs> now I'm gonna check out this um, logic chip once more. It was kind of usable even uh, with only two lines, but uh, to a certain point that was. <laughs> this was a 74LS138 uh, and if you hold in the button it will jump ahead faster faster until you let go and then it will jump just one. So it doesn't take a long time to move uh, couple of hundred chips <laughs> 138 which is a decoder 
Oh, now I can see. Pause. Chip OK again. Nice. <laughs> then I revisit this uh, RAM chip that was uh, faulty. But uh, we couldn't see any information. Let's see if I go back now. DRAM. Come on. And it was uh, 4164. So this did not detect it as a 4164. Let's try another one that uh, was working. Yeah, now we can see the progress of the test. It does a variety of uh, different uh, bit patterns to test these uh, RAM chips. Test passed. Nice. Now a 74LS00. Yeah, chip OK. So another neat feature that this uh, tester has is that it can actually test and copy the content out of uh, EEPROM chips and uh, I got one here at 27C256 uh, that is uh, <laughs> Donkey Kong on for the week 20. So I'm gonna reset and uh, try and uh, test this one. So it's a 256. 32 by 8. Okay. So it calculated uh, a CRC32 1F28A2D. Don't know what that zero means, but we got the same uh, result again. If you're gonna copy the contents of a chip, you need a memory card module like this one. And uh, this is a common one uh, that you get with uh, different Arduino kits. So I'm gonna test now with uh, this and uh, see if we can copy that chip. To enable a memory module, you need to go into the config and uh, change a few things. So SD card is supposed to be on and then dump. And there I saw the enable beep. I didn't hear any beeps on this, but uh, it is enabled already. So um, maybe the trimmer needs to be adjusted a little bit. So exit and save config. So now it should be enabled with the memory dumping feature. And then you find the chip you want to make a dump of, like this one. And uh, to save it to the memory card, you need to hold the OK button when you activate the test and it should uh, dump the contents. Hold the OK. SD in it failed, all right. Let's try again. Saving, yeah. And the reason it failed first was uh, simply because I have inserted uh, <laughs> the SD card module uh, <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> Embarrassing, but uh, now it's correct and it was saved. So uh, I'm going to take a look at the file now. So here's the content of the memory card. It's uh, full of other stuff, but uh, yeah, this is the file that was saved. Uh, it has the checksum number uh, from uh, the tester. Uh, <laughs> The date, of course, is uh, wrong because uh, <laughs> the retro tester doesn't have a clock. That's uh, <laughs> for one thing. So, but it's a 32 kilobyte, which was uh, the chip. So let's open it into the hex editor. And here it is. Let's see if we find anything recognizable. Yeah, it says game over, <laughs> player one, player two. So that actually worked. Nintendo all rights reserved. So that's nice. And now I'm gonna do a final test and it's this one. It's a Commodore Plus 4 kernel uh, ROM. And uh, this should be at 3364 uh, as I have selected here. And uh, this is uh, 28 pins. The pin number is uh, in the parentheses. So let's check this out. Yeah, it 
read that just fine. That was all the testing and now I'm going to see if this uh, bottom case that I printed in uh, nice white, if it uh, fits. I need to remove those uh, standoffs then. Yeah, that's a perfect fit. Clicks right in, that's how I like it. So at least now this is protected from uh, the backside and uh, yeah, protected from accidentally shorting out some of the solder joints. Uh, so I'm not really sure what kind of screws goes into here, but um, however, the screw holes does not align up. Maybe I need to turn it around. Yeah, that's better. I just found a couple of random screws here. Maybe they're a little bit uh, too small. No, I think those fit. <laughs> Perfect. So I might print out uh, the top cover later, but for now I think it's uh, cool just to have it open like this. And of course it protects the board from uh, being bent, so that's also a benefit of uh, having that. Okay, surely I will fix uh, the display later, uh, but for that I either need to provide um, a flat cable or uh, unused the uh, printed uh, 3D model as a holder for this, or I need to provide the correct spacers between to hold it uh, firmly to the board. Okay, that was it for this video. I didn't cover all the feature of uh, the Retro Chip Tester, a really good uh, product. I really enjoyed uh, building it. It was uh, not that uh, difficult either, <laughs> reasonably easy. So it has a lot of features and a lot of uh, options for uh, powering it and uh, all those chips. I don't have a lot of faulty chips, unfortunately. I usually throw them away, but uh, at least I found a dead uh, RAM chip and at least I verified some of my working chips and that's uh, perhaps just as important uh, if you are diagnosing some machine that are faulty that you can check out chips. So all in all a very good product and I uh, really liked it. Uh, only drawback is that it isn't open uh, source hardware and uh, that's a little bit of a pity but I can understand of course that someone that puts uh, this much effort into uh, designing something like this, uh, want to have some return on the investment. Uh, however, if it was open source hardware, then uh, anybody could maybe improve on this and perhaps added uh, even more features. So um, that's it, but uh, that's how it is. Uh, anyway, thanks a lot for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please, uh, hit that like button. With that I just say thanks for watching and a special thanks to my patrons. See you, bye bye.